Okay, so here we are back at the products page, and here you see we have a list of products right here. And what I want to do is I want to show you how to add a new product to the system. So I'm going to come up here. I could come up here and click Add Product Here, or I could click Add Product Here. Either one, they both take me to the same place, which is a blank Add Product screen. Okay, and I'm going to just name this product Test Product. Now I'm going to do something here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here and there's a reason that we're gonna do this and that's because we want things to align up correctly out front and if I don't put a break tag here everything is gonna show up on one line and it's gonna look funny um, if it's going to be a featured product and we're gonna make this one a featured product because we want we want to actually show this we want this product to actually show up right here out front is what we want to do okay so if we don't put this break tag in here it's just gonna say test product all the way across and these buttons are not are gonna be pushed up like this and they're not gonna be all even so this is the only piece of code you're ever gonna to have to write and it's a very simple one you have the uh, you have the greater than and less than signs and right between them you're gonna put BR which stands for break is all that does and what that's gonna do is it's gonna put a line break in there it's and it's just gonna take this product and put it on a different line is what it's going to do. You only need to do this for featured products because that's okay on on products that you don't want to show up here on the home page they're going to look differently on the main shop page there's more space and stuff so it's okay they can be a little um, haphazard on the main shop page that looks fine we've discovered but here on the home page you're going to want this to be nice and square and so you're going to want these you're going to want the names to be on two lines so you're going to want to name them accordingly so you can make sure you don't you don't go, you don't um, exceed the name of the product uh, for two lines and then you're going to make sure um, that you're always going to need to at least have two words in the product name because you're going to need to put a break tag in there to get the stuff to line up correctly. So, But you're only going to have to worry about that on products that are going to be featured. And only products that are featured right here in the product category, the only product category we have right now, you click featured, that's going to put that in, that's going to put that product on the home page. Now I'm going to give this product, this is going to be the long description of the product here. And I'm going to jump down here real quick, and I'm also going to show you, this is the short description down here. And you will want to enter both of these in, and you'll want to make them both different in some way, shape, or form. This should be basically your introductory information to the product, and it can be short, doesn't have to be anything long, and this is your actual description of the product itself. So, and I'll show you exactly where that's going, where these are going to appear when we, um, when, when we publish this product. Um, this product. So now I'm going to leave this as a simple product. I'm not going to worry about any of these because I'm not going to have to change any of these. We're just going to use standard shipping on everything. I'm going to give it an SKU of uh, let's say 1,005. Give it a price of $100. Now I'm just going to put in 100. I'm not going to put double zeros in because in this system, if you have something that's actually just an even dollar price, $20, $30, even if you put in double zeros, it's not going to show it in the front. So I'll go ahead and put them in here just so you can see, but it won't show them in the front. So if I wanted to give it a sale price of, let's say, $79.99, okay, and I'm not going to add any custom fields. I don't need any custom fields, but I will set a featured image, and I'm just going to choose one from the library. I could upload one, but I'm just going to pick that real quick. It's a 500. Uh, we're looking for a 500 by 500 pixel image is really what you're looking for. Uh, speaking um, these images right here are 640 by 480 but the system is going to crop these and it's okay we're, we'll let the system crop these because everything is pretty much centered in these but most of the time you're going to want to use an even you know like 500 by 500 pixel image so that you can choose where it's going to be cropped because if not the system's just going to crop it into a square image because it's going to need to do that for the product image itself so now that we've put in a featured product we could have uploaded one simply by actually coming over here we'll remove that featured product and I could have came over here to upload files and then just go search for a file to upload but we'll just for sake of example we'll just put this one in right here so now we've got our featured image we've got our SKU we've got our price I also added a sale price so you can see what that looks like we got our short description we've got our long description we made it a feature product because we wanted to appear on the front page and because we made it a feature product we did put a break tag right there in the middle of the name so we would have uh, we would have the name show up on two lines now we're going to click publish now, let's go back to the front page, and let's refresh the page, and now our latest product is our test product, and as you see, we've got it, our add to cart button is even with the other ones because we put our break tag in there. We, it was originally $100, but, and as you'll notice, the double zeros are removed from that 100. It does not show it unless 
it has an actual sense, which is 74.99. So when you're entering in an even number, no need to put in the double zeros on the end there uh, for the sense because it, it won't matter. The system will remove them anyway. Um, and if we go into the test product, we will see we've we we have our sale. It is on sale. We will see our short description right here um, underneath our price and right above our Add to Cart button. And then down here we will see our long description, our long product description, and a description tag. So that is how you add a product. Now let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and, and remove this. Now, as you see on the actual product page, you're getting an, the actual full image. But here, notice, see these images? That when we go to the home page, you'll notice that these images have been cropped automatically by the system into a square image. So that's why we recommend that you use a square image. Um, it will show up as a square image on the product page too, but the only place um, that will show the actual size of the image is directly on the product page. And so it can be a little unpredictable in the way the system may crop that image. So that's why we recommend you cropping your own images before you upload them to the system. But I don't need this product because I just used it for an example. So I'm going to come back to the products page. I'm going to show you how to delete it. It's a two-step process to permanent permanently delete a product. Here, um, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click trash right underneath here when I hover over the product. I'm going to get the products ID, quick edit button, a view, and a duplicate. You can duplicate a product if you want to. Um, duplicate it and then just go in. Um, and uh, and when you click duplicate, all that happens, let me show you, get a quick Boom. All you does, it just takes you into the product, it just names a copy, and it allows you to uh, go in and edit that, remove that picture. If it was just, you just had a different name, the product was identical, and all you wanted to do was you just needed to give it a different name and a different picture, you could do that very easily by telling it that you wanted to duplicate the products. But we're not going to do that. I don't need to duplicate a product. What I do need to do is I do need to delete. Now I need to delete both of these. So I could tell it to, to trash this right here, or... I could select both of these. Instead of doing them one by one, I could come up here to bulk actions and tell it to move these to the trash. And now when I do that, it's going to go ahead and move those to the trash. And now I've got to actually come into the trash. And I could come under here and I could restore them. I could duplicate them even in the trash. I could just have, if I wanted to, all of the things that I'm going to duplicate in the trash and then just come in and delete permanently stuff that I don't want. You could use uh, the trash as a, as, a, as a way to do that, but I don't recommend that. Um, and then uh, uh, you could click delete permanently right here, and if I do that, we'll delete it permanently. But I have two of these, so I want to do a bulk action. And, and, if, I, and if I want to delete everything, all of it, I can just come up here to this little, instead of clicking on these individually, I can come up here, just click on that and it will select everything in there. I can come down here and click delete permanently. And it's just going to delete them permanently, mind you, it's not, once again, both of these steps are not going to ask you to confirm that you want to do that. That's why this extra step is in there. It's basically a confirmation without confirming anything. If you go into the trash and you're and you're saying you're going to delete stuff, you're obviously in there wanting to delete stuff in the trash. So um, that's just kind of how uh, WordPress views that. So now that we've deleted those, we come back in and we'll see that um, the product we created is now gone. So that is how you create and delete products in the WooCommerce system.